Hi everybody, I hope you are doing well these days. If you're a fan of the Driver series, you must have played Driver 2 at one point in your life. Depending on the region you're living in, most of you should have played a version subtitled The Wheelman is Back in the US or Back on the Street in Europe. But for some of you, you might have played on so-called bootleg version of Driver 2 that are sharing very interesting cover and CDR. Usually these versions are lacking content or are very buggy since they are not official, but in today's video you are going to see the opposite. A member of the Driver Discord called Doc Kalud talked to us last week about his version of Driver 2 being not quite like the official version. Living in a region where the game wasn't officially distributed, it was a bootleg version, but in that case revealing an early bolt of the game that actually has more content and difference from the final version. His build is dated from October 1st, while the final version is dated from 31 October, that's a whole month's difference. That's not the first time we came across an early build of Driver 2 as seen on this table made by Racing Freak, a fellow member of the Driver community. But the one gave by Doc Kalud is the earliest one known with the four cities and the complete story mission playable. Our expert at the driver community checked the build to gather all the difference with the official release and while this build might still have secrets to be found, we will tell you today everything that we found so far. Here are some of the best differences and weird stuff that you can spot in the undercover mode of this early build of Driver 2. First of all, there are two in-game cutscenes that when starting the mission, you can control Tanner on foot, chase the intruder in Chicago, and chase the gunman in Rio, allowing you to get Tanner inside a car and already drive it when the mission really starts. A simple thing, yeah, but the idea to be able to move around during cutscenes is indeed very interesting, because with the different camera angles, you need some training before getting what you want and it gives a little more strategic touch to the missions if it had received more work to develop that feature. Allowing players to change cars has its advantage. In Driver 1, you were stuck being wanted by the police as soon as you obtained any felony. While Driver 2 allowed you to ease your gameplay by getting rid of said police attention using the on-foot mechanics to steal a new car. In this newly found version of the game, however, as soon as you enter a new vehicle, you get a certain amount of felony back. It seems the developers didn't want to give players a way to completely remove Tanner's felony as when he acquires a set of new wheels, he often leaves a witness behind that could alert the authorities. In the Chicago mission to the docks, there even seems to be on-foot felony, as he gained it by going near police vehicles. Whether this is some sort of an oversight, however, remains unclear. The felony system would be tweaked further in Driver 3, with the addition of safe houses, which upon being entered, would clear any felony you had attained. Driver Parallel Lines introduced even further tweaks, with TK having the ability to hide in plain sight as long as he wasn't in a car that had some heat on it. As we're approaching to our first cut mission from Driver 2, I'm gonna credit Classic PlayStation Gamer from the Driver Madness Discord for finding all of these cut missions, which are only accessible by using level cheats. This one is called John's Rendezvous, involving you to drive from King's Compound to the starting point of leaving Chicago. In Havana, there is a cut mission called Truck to the Lockup, which involves driving one of Lenny's trucks back to your lockup, an easy mission. The third cut mission from Driver 2 is called Lose the Cops, and it happens after boat jump. It is basically a getaway from the boat's explosion. Chicago might be the first city you're playing in. In this build it's clearly the worst looking one, with a lot of unfinished parts and poor overall performance. The skybox is also using very different sky textures. The traffic car variety is also different from the final version with a lot of van spawning. Regarding the secret car location, there is a little difference since you can open the door of the stadium yourself, 
instead of going to the ticket booth to buy the entrance. Unlike the final version, the traffic lights are actually working on the multiplayer map of Chicago. Havana is the first city which has different spawning locations depending on your choice of day or night time. There are also more variety colours in the pickup trucks colours, green and grey slash silver in pre-release versus dark grey and purple in the final version. The quick getaway 1 mission that starts in Havana starts down the street at the cemetery. In multiplayer, the take a ride at the Plaza de Revolution has the felony display on. Vegas is definitely the city that changed the most between the pre-release and the final version. Thanks to an update to the driver level viewer by Christy, we can see very clearly the differences between the two versions. The pre-release does have more details in the way, with higher buildings in some places, as well as more barriers that were removed in the final version. A lot of those buildings don't have proper hitboxes though, and Tana can go in the warehouse of the final mission which is closed in the final version. The secret car area is also different. In regards to the multiplayer changes, the police car has all the quarter panel textures as seen in those from Driver 1, and different front texture in night multiplayer levels. Like Chicago, the traffic lights are working but the house with the doorbell and the garage in the lakes isn't there. Instead, it is just a generic building like the surrounding buildings. Finally, Rio hasn't changed a lot. Like Havana and Rio, the spawning location is different for both day and night time. But no cars spawn on almost the entire west freeway in Rio. In the multiplayer levels, the police car uses Las Vegas' police car hood and the brown truck has a proper body contrary to the final version. Deep inside the files of that same early build, a discovery was made regarding an unused vehicle texture meant for a cut car in Vegas, a 72 Plymouth satellite. Although the 3D model is nowhere to be found due to the Challenger overriding it, thanks to Racing Freak, we can now enjoy a recreation of the car for Driver 1 on PC, with the original textures from Driver 2. To be as faithful as possible to the original vehicle, Racing Freak used images from a French magazine joypad for reference where the unused car can be seen in missions. It should be noted that this French magazine had a different build version of Driver 2 compared to ours, since the textures were only found in the multiplayer level of Vegas. That build might hold even more secrets, but to this day, we don't know where it is. For now, you can enjoy the new car in Driver 1 by following the link in the description. During the third mission of Chicago, which is Train Pursuit, you can see in the background a car accident that isn't present in the final version. In Tailing the Drop, you can exit your car at the beginning and it will drive by itself like an AI car, while you can do the mission with another car and still hear Jones talking to you. In leaving Chicago, the weather is a rainy afternoon, different from the rainy night in the final version. Also, there's a longer timer to do the mission, but you don't have an in-game cutscene when you get to the train station. Now, in Find the Clue, it gets very weird. The good news is that you don't have a timer to beat the mission, making it way easier to complete it. But there's a creepy thing. In this mission, if you take a police car and start the sirens, that's not the regular sound you're expecting to hear from this cop car, but instead, it will be the bells of the cemetery. This is the only time in this build where it happens. At the start of To The Docks, the ferry is glitchy and your car will fall through the ground no matter what. The only fix is to get out of your car as soon as the mission starts, and to exit the ferry, you need to do a moonwalk as it is harder to get out the normal way. I want to thank Golden Slender and St. John from the Driver Madness Discord for helping me out with this mission, because I couldn't find a proper way to start it and complete it, uh, until they told me, hey, get off the car and 
uh, walk backwards to get off the boat. So yeah, thank you very much for that as well. In Las Vegas, after you deliver the car bomb to Vasquez Casino, you can actually use it for the next mission, Casino Getaway, where the car will be intact. Also, worth mentioning, as soon as the gameplay for Chase the Gunman begins, it is an instant win, which, if you ask me, it saves a lot of stress for this mission. What a better way to end this part on the mission's differences by talking about the final mission. The most noticeable difference is simply that there is no proximity check that will make you fail the mission, meaning you can free roam in Rio while the helicopter is escaping and also the pursuers don't spawn outside the mission track. Even when the helicopter has crashed, you can still drive in like it's your usual Sunday tour. Remember, for more details, a deeper look into gameplay and a complete commentary of almost every mission of this build of the game, stay tuned for the next video. That was all from me and thank you for listening to all of this. Adiós amigos.